Hello people, welcome to another scripting tutorial. Now, I swear this has got to be like the fourth time that I'm recording this thing. Uh, the first time I tried to use a different software but it didn't work. Second time I think um, I forgot to press play or record. Uh, third time my microphone was muted. Um, <coughs> so, this is like the fourth time now. Right, so this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to make a... Uh, what's it called again? Got now. Uh, status GUI. Status GUI. Yes. It's been so many times I've recorded this damn thing. Anyway, so let's start by making the actual um, GUI. So go to your starter GUI. Insert a screen GUI. Insert the screen GUI. Insert a frame. Inside the frame, insert a text label. Okay. So let's begin sizing our frame. Um, we're going to use a scale property size it to make it the width of the screen and 0.15 as height okay you don't have to make yours the exact same size as mine I'm just making mine um, however I want really you can custom yours however you want it to be um, obviously you don't want yours to look like mine because mine's not going to look that good it's just a tutorial anyway I made the backgrounds transparent now I'm going to go to the text label let's make the text scaled okay and let's make the text color completely black uh, why not change the font let's see what they have uh, nope legacy legacy looks nice okay and let's give these um, elements a nice name a suitable reasonable name meaningful name so status bar for the that called the frame main and I'm going to call the text label status. Okay, again, you can call them however you want. Uh, depends how you like it. Anyways, insert a, insert a script into the workspace and call it main script. And let's begin by making a while true do loop. Uh, okay, I'm going to give that a little weight there. Um, now, you do need this comment at the top of your code, otherwise, your script will not work. So, what you need to do now is insert a string value into your main script and let's call it status okay now we need to make an object variable called status equals script.status just so that we don't have to keep whenever we refer to the status we don't have to keep saying script.status script.status in the script we can just call it status okay so let's make a nice little for loop counter now for i equals 60 to 1 minus 1 Let's count down. Wait one second. Make sure you've got that wait in there. Otherwise, your script will just instantly count down from 60. And it won't wait a second after every step. S now, status.value equals game begins in concatenate i onto the end of that string. Uh, we're now changing the value of the status to this string here. Okay? So that our status object here will have the value of that after every step in the for loop. So, that's that done. That's this part of the script done. Now I'm not going to make the rest of the game obviously because this is not the entire game. I'm not going to make the rest of the game though because I'm just teaching you how to make the status bar in this video and not an entire game. You need to figure that out for yourself. So, now go to your text label which is called status hopefully and insert a script into it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to try and get the status status equals game dot workspace dot main script dot status okay and we're going to make an event called chain or status dot changed we're going to connect that event to this lovely little function over here uh, which has a parameter of property now I will explain all of this uh, I'll explain it right now actually basically changed event I'm not sure if I've shown you what the changed event is yet but if I haven't I'll tell you now Think of the changed event like a little person that sits over uh, this bit, which is the status. So let's let's find the status here. Here's the status. Think of it as a little person that sits over it and watches until one of the properties change, whether it be the name, the parent, or the or the value. In this case, it's the value. Um, so the person sits over, watches it change. As soon as value changes, he he tells this script here with the changed event, and he says, "Look." the value um, 
property, the value property in status has changed. So call this lovely little function over here. Um, okay, and that's what happens. This parameter here, property, property is basically just equal to the property that changes. Uh, don't write this bit down, but I'm just showing you what happens. Um, in this case, the value property is changing, so property will be equal to value. And for instance, if status was a humanoid and the health changed, then property would be equal to health, and it's a string. Okay, right. So now that we know, now that we know the status has changed, we can say uh, script dot parent dot what's it called? Uh, text. Gonna say I'm forgetting quite a lot today. Uh, status dot value. So we're going to set the text of our text label to the value of the status. Okay. Uh, this is the, using the changed event is much better than having a while true do loop looping every single second because that's just inefficient. We're going to have to keep looping every second. We don't want to do that. We want a nice little changed event which only runs once the status value has changed. Okay. So let's go over what's happening then. In our main script, we are changing the value property of our status object here. Uh, our little person sitting over status detects detects it. Uh, finds the event changed on status and calls this nice little function here, uh, where we add, where we update the text uh, text label to status dot value. Okay, we don't need to use this parameter yet, or we don't need to use it at all in this case. Uh, you may find a case where you do need to use this property, but not now. Anyway, now that all our scripts are done, let's go ahead and test it. Now if you haven't watched my previous tutorials, make sure you do watch them because you won't get really what I'm doing or you might, I don't know how much scripting knowledge you have yet I don't know, anyway let's see if this thing works game begins in, yep it works and the reason it starts, the reason it started from 53 is because the server opened um, before my player joined the game so the server started counting before I was actually in the game and the server got to about 50 and then that's when I joined, that's why it showed from 50 and not 60. Anyway, so it works, that's good. So, now you know how to do that. Uh, make sure you like uh, the video, leave a comment on the video, share the video with your friends. Um, now, you have maybe have noticed that I haven't really been uh, replying to comments that much, because uh, I am quite busy making my other games as well. So if you do see a comment that has not been replied to by anyone and you do know the answer to the question that they are asking in the comment, if it is a question, then go ahead and reply to that comment and help your fellow scripters because uh, you do get better at scripting by helping other people as well. So yeah. Right. Anyway, I think I can go now. I think you've learned enough from this video. So goodbye and see you in the next tutorial.